Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk about why CMake. Um, I'm sure you've probably heard it. If you don't use it, you've heard about CMake at least, and you're wondering, well, why does it exist? What does it do? Why do I want to use it? And I hope to answer those questions in today's video. So first of all, if you'd like to follow along, uh, I will be doing all of my coding here in Visual Studio Code. The extension I installed was the C++ extension pack from Microsoft, and that automatically brought along um, all this C++ highlighting and all that. I also put in CMake tools, and I believe that also told it to install the CMake language support. So I'll just scroll down. Yes, all of those should have all come along automatically. So uh, if you just want to take a quick look at that, if you don't have any of these, you might want to install them to be able to follow along. Also, you'll want to install, in the example, I'll be doing G++, um, GDB. So G++ will allow you to compile C++. GDB will allow you to debug things um, using the GNU compiler suite. Um, build Essential. Uh, and also, in case you're a newbie at the command line, you can type in um, like build-es, and if you hit tab, it'll auto-complete it for you. Along with that, we're going to install CMake and Ninja-Build. And again, you can use autocomplete on that as well. That should be all that you need to have installed so that you can follow along. I already have all of these. So now you might be wondering, um, just in this example here, I have a Hello World program and you may be thinking, well, this is easy enough. We can just do G++. We can type in main.cpp, hit enter, and we have a.out. If we run that, we get hello world. Now, that's not too bad. Uh, anybody can deal with that. So the issue comes into play is if you want to compile this let's say on Windows using Microsoft's Visual C++ compiler, MSVC, you need to type in different commands into your command line. If you want to switch over to Clang instead of G++, then you need to potentially have slight differences such as I think some of the flags are different. If you want to use um, this on Mac, there's um, different things you may need to enter there as well. So being able to cross compile or I should say compile on multiple operating systems uh, is definitely um, a perk of it. Also, if you have an include directory or multiple include directories, then you have to do dash capital I and put in your include path you might need to do multiple of those. You need to put in your dash L's for your libraries you would like to link to. Um, and eventually, you might have half a page of just stuff that goes into the command line. And you can copy and paste it into the command line, and that's easy enough. However, as the nature of programmers are, why not write a program to do it for you? And this is when you had things like make, and on Windows you would have nmake, now there's ninja, and I'm sure there's other build tools out there that I'm not even thinking of, but they do that for you. And as programmers, then there's always the next level. Why not write a program that automatically writes those build files? And that's what CMake is. So just as an example, let's uh, step through how CMake would work on the command line, and then I will show you how it's integrated in the Visual Studio Code. So I'm just going to create a new file here called CMake Lists 
txt. This file is a very specifically named file. After that, I'll do CMake minimum required. I'll put in their version. And I'm just going to do 3.10.0. Uh, if there's any specific features down the road that you're looking for, you might need to check which minimum version you need for that. Uh, project. Everything needs to have a project. I'm just going to call it testing. And I'm going to put add executable because this is an executable file. I'll put in their project name. And instead of commas, everything separate with spaces in CMake. So I will put in my main.cpp. I'll save that. Now, another nice thing with CMake is you might, you'll, you will want to do this. You'll want to have out of source builds. What that means is all of your build files won't pollute your main area here that you're working in. So I'm just going to do make directory, call it build, and I'm going to go into my build directory. Now at this point, what I can do is CMake. I'm telling it to go up a level to find the CMake list.txt, and I'll do just dash G. And these are the different generators you can use. And I'm sure there's multiple generators on other operating systems too that might not even be listed here. Um, Unix make files is the default. This is going to make the make file and you use make, make install, and all that kind of fun things. Um, Ninja is what we're going to be focusing on in this example. So I put in here Ninja. And you can see it does a bunch of cool stuff for me. Um, you will need to run, if you do this in the command line, you will need to run this cmake dot dot dash g ninja whenever you change the cmake file itself. So if you decide you're going to add multiple executables in here or maybe do some libraries or add in sub projects or various other things, it can get pretty complex what you can do. You'll need to run CMake so that it can build all your build files again. However, if you just change code, um, you just need to run Ninja from that point forward. So we ran Ninja, and now you see that there is testing located in here. And if I run it, da 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 da, that's our Hello World program. Now you might be thinking, okay, well. This seems like it might be more complicated, and um, it is in the beginning, and it really starts to pay off the more complex that your code and your project gets. Now, I'm going to show you what I think is the easier way of managing this is rather than dealing with the command line, we're going to switch over to using the GUI way of doing it. So I'm going to delete my build folder. I'm going to delete this one that we had out there. And so I have my CMake list. None of this has changed. And I also have my main.cpp. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the little main menu here. I use F1. If you don't have or if, I should say if your function keys are mapped to brightness and sound and fast forward and all those things, um, this is embarrassing. I actually don't know the normal shortcut people use. It's like control shift P or something. Uh, let's find out control shift P. Yeah, control shift P. Um, you can start typing in there CMake and you'll want to run configure. And there we go. Everything's been configured for us. Yours may ask you what kit you would like to use. So mine defaulted to using the GNU compiler collection. But if you have Clang and GNU on there or multiple versions of GCC, it will ask you more than likely what you would like. You can always change that later by clicking here and I could switch over to Clang. I'm going to continue to use the one it 
let's set to by default here. And I can just hit build. And it says everything built correctly. If I hit run, it will automatically take me to a terminal built in. And as you can see here, it says hello world. Now the other neat thing that this makes very easy to use is you can drop in your breakpoints and you can hit the little bug for debugging. And the at this point, it basically becomes almost an IDE rather than just a text editor. It'll start to show you all of the variables you have over here, your call stack, breakpoints you have. You can step through your code line by line. And if you click on the terminal tab, in the, this case, because it's a command line program, as you go through line by line, things will start to appear in here. It's just um, extremely handy. So this is the very bare bone basics of why CMake exists. It is essentially to try to make your compiling process easier. If you're coming from the land of Visual Studio, where you just right click and you hit build, and then you click the run button, and you can just step through and debug and all of that. It is very similar in VS Code or Visual Studio Code once you implement starting to use CMake. Now there's a little bit more boilerplate that stuff that you have to do by filling out this file and I plan on doing future videos of showing things that you can do with that. But um, it will help with that process greatly in my mind. The other benefit is as you start including directories, um, if you have an include directory that let's say is only for Linux and another include directory that's for Windows or things like that, you can put that in here and just hit the build button and it will work. And then if you go to another computer, different operating system, you can hit the build button and as long as this file is configured correctly, it will just work out of the box. You don't have to go, okay, I'm switching compilers. I want to test it on a Windows compiler instead of on GNU compiler. How do I do that? You don't have to worry about that. That's all taken care of for you. So this is a basic um, outline. I hope that you enjoyed this and that this was educational and we look forward to seeing you next time.